it's been a volatile year in the commodity space right now, but how do you see things setting up in 2022 for, in particular, on the gold side? And we'll, then we'll drill down a little bit and take a look at silver and some of the other metals as well. Yeah, I think in the short term, unfortunately, we you know we see gold largely as probably set up for another volatility, particularly in the first half of the year. You know, as we saw through 2021, you know, every data point that came out on inflation or the jobs number or GDP, you know, markets were starting to discount, you know, is the Fed going to taper quicker or taper later? So there's a lot of volatility just around that whole tapering announcement. And now obviously that's out of the way. Um, but unfortunately, it looks like the whole interest rate um, discussion is yet to happen. <music> Hi, I'm Greg Gwinner, Senior Investment Advisor at Canaccord Genuity Wealth Management and Gwinner Wealth Management. Now, welcome to the channel where we help you make sense of the financial world. Now, today, I'm going to be joined by Canaccord Genuity Precious Metal Analyst, Kerry McCurry. Kerry, how are you? I'm great. Yourself? Awesome. Awesome. Hey, well, thanks for joining again. Now, we're coming into 2022. Uh, it's been a volatile year in the commodity space right now, but how do you see things setting up in 2022 for, in particular, on the gold side, and we'll, then we'll drill down a little bit and take a look at silver and some of the other metals as well. Yeah, I think in the short term, unfortunately, we you know we see gold largely as probably set up for another volatility, particularly in the first half of the year. You know, as we saw through 2021, you know, every data point that came out on inflation or the jobs number or GDP, you know markets were starting to discount, you know, is the Fed going to taper quicker or taper later? So there's a lot of volatility just around that whole tapering announcement. And now obviously that's out of the way. Um, but unfortunately, it looks like the whole interest rate um, discussion is yet to happen. So I think in the first half of next year, we're going to see, you know, is the Fed going to raise two or three times? Like if you look at three months ago, there was mm -hmm. a chance of one rate hike in 2022. Now it's up to three. Yeah. whether that's too much already or, or not enough. So that's one thing, obviously, to watch. The second thing is inflation. Everyone obviously has their view. Is, in, is this an inflation spiral that we're, we're heading into, or is it so-called transitory, even though the Fed's not using that word anymore? Um, so there's still a lot of questions, I guess, on how gold unfolds in, in 2022. But ultimately, regardless of what the Fed does or central banks do, we think there's not a lot they can do. There may be, a, you know, some minor increases in interest rates and, and some tapering, but ultimately, you know, we think monetary policy is going to be easier for longer, just given the state of the world we live in. Yeah, no, it sure seems that way. Now, I know that uh, Tony Dwyer put out a note and he said that, you know, he could see inflation backing off a little bit past this spike here and maybe a little bit more stability going forward here. But, you know, I, I, I still think the jury's out on that right now. I, I do agree with you that, uh, you know, easier monetary policy is probably here to stay for a lot longer than we, uh, than we anticipated. I mean, we have been printing like literally trillions of dollars um and that's you know, i don't like saying unprecedented but th that that's that's a lot i remember you know i remember the financial crisis when the tarp program came in it was going to be 800 billion dollars and that was like no no we can't do that that is so much money and now that seems to be chump change uh so it, it's a different world now let's just kind of move back into the fundamentals of a, of a number of uh you know not any specific company but um uh, you know the the general health of the um of the companies in your space as they are right now because uh, from looking from the outside you know balance sheets seem to be in pretty good shape on uh and and it is a good commodity price there so how do you see fundamentally for the the sector well certainly again i mean i think as we've talked before like the sector really has never been in a better place. If you look at, even though we've had a lot of volatility this year, the gold price is, is you know, set to average $1,800 an ounce, which would be a record yeah. annual price. Last year's record was about seventeen seventy. dollars So, you know, certainly at these levels, companies are making a lot of free cash flow. As you've seen, you know, companies are raising dividends across the board. We've seen share buybacks, yet balance sheets continue to improve. Companies are building cash balances. So certainly from a fundamental standpoint, the industry, again, I don't think has probably been in better shape as it is, um, you know, costs are under contained and, you know, there's a little bit of worry about cost inflation in the miners, but from what we've seen from the bigger guys, it looks like it's sort of mid single digit. It's not the sort of, you know, double digit cost inflation we saw in the last cycle. So, you know, I think the companies are in good shape and, uh, you know, I think they're looking forward to a good 2022. Now, if you look at investor sentiment, I think it's very low in the sector. I mean, a lot of mm -hmm. investors, I think piled in in 2020 and we had the big run up and then they all sort of piled out as we had the, the recovery theme. So there is definitely a disconnect between the, where the, you know, where the equities are valued versus where the gold price is. Yeah. Now, given the balance sheets are in strong shape, you know, are, do you think we're going to start seeing some more M&A activity? 
Certainly we've seen M&A pick up. Um, you know, you look at 2019 was almost a record relative to the last cycle of 20, 2011. Um, obviously COVID sort of suppressed 2020, but we're almost at another record this year in 2021. So we certainly have seen M&A, but again, I think it's, it's almost a demonstration of discipline. Yet the M&A that we've seen, it's, it's, it's zero premium deals or low premium deals. Yeah, It's not big 30% premiums that you saw in the old days that, you know, ended up in write downs later on. Yeah, so I think it's exactly. been very measured. And I think there is a recognition that, you know, certainly for the single asset companies, it's almost becoming an extinction list, right? They're getting picked off sort of one by one. So I think there is a, a recognition to have a little bit more scale, a little bit more diversification makes sense. Yeah, you know, either from a, you know, you know, a geographic point of view or from a geopolitical point of view, it's, it's important as well. Um, why don't we jump on to, onto the silver side? Because, you know, you know, we've seen, you know, obviously silver has mirrored gold and its performance uh, to date. What, uh, what are you seeing out there? I mean, so silver tends to be gold, um, you know, magnified. So obviously when yeah. gold dripping, silver tends to perform and, and vice versa. So it's pulled back. Now it's interesting to look at, you know, the silver price this year is, is set to average about $25, which is actually a big step up over the last couple of years. You know, we were mm. below $20 just a couple of years ago versus gold. It's sort of more in line with 2020. So even though gold or sorry, silver has come off recently, I do think it's actually outperformed on a, on a sort of an average basis. Um, and if you look at most commodities, I mean, you look at the copper price, you know, gold price, you know, pretty much any commodity, they're kind of near record levels and silver is way off its record level. I mean, the record level of silver is more like $50. So trading at $22, it does seem cheap. Um, and unlike gold supply, most silver comes from zinc or lead mines, which, you know, so the silver price doesn't really move the dial for people to build silver mines. So, you know, it's, it's an industry where supply has been falling. You've got, you know, a lot of silver being used in the solar industry, which has been growing exponentially. So I think it's just a matter of time before silver, you know, really gets, uh, you know, starts to outperform here. Mm -hmm. now, you, now you touched on some of the other commodities, like copper, because I, I know we had uh, uh, Javin on a couple of, uh, you know, weeks ago, and he's kind of watching copper like a hawk just with those prices where they're at right now. And, uh, you know, Typically, when things get that pricey, there's always got to be a little bit of concern in the general market. But from a, a complex point of view, from the metals complex, um, despite investor sentiment, it still seems that uh, I, I think the industry is in, in, in good shape. Is, is that your take on things? I think so. Now, again, you know, obviously volatility, just given the macro uncertainty, is going gonna, is gonna to be an issue. Um, but, you know, at, as you know, like this sector... And I'm talking the broader complex, you know, mm -hmm. had a bear market from 2015 to 2019. It was like four years of, you know, less and less investment. All the kind of big mines have been built. There's not a lot of new supply going into the into the into the ground. And then, you know, obviously the whole electrification theme, EV, yeah. you know, the demand for copper. So, you know, it it seems like it's set up well structurally to to continue to perform here. But obviously, you know, the macro volatility, the U.S. dollar you know, what goes on in the short term in terms of monetary policy is, I guess that's one of the big questions for 2022. Is that going to, you know, is that going to affect just gold or is it going to affect the commodities in general? Does it affect the U.S. dollar? Does it affect the, the broader markets? So I think that's sort of the big question. Yeah. And, you know, and, and the other thing, too, just as uh, in, the, in the past, you know, when when the world got volatile, uh, people would run to gold. They would also run to the U.S. dollar. Uh, seems to be that there, there's a competing interest with with Bitcoin out there right now, as far as you know, where the and that's a bit more of the speculative money runs to. Uh, have you seen that having an effect on the on the overall price? Or do you think that's just kind of a blip in the machine? You know, I think there's a you know there's a certain investor class that likes Bitcoin. You know, it's a new it's a new thing. So it's a bit of a tech story plus uh, you know. I guess arguably some of the same reasons people would buy gold, but certainly most of the institutional investors we talk to, you know, they're still in the gold space. You know, central banks are still holding gold, buying gold. So I think it's I think the jury's still out on you know where Bitcoin is. Yeah, no, five, I, ten, I, I'm, two years from now, three months from now, two weeks from now. <laughs> I, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm I'm with you on that side. Um, yeah, I think that uh, yeah. Well, you know. Why don't we wrap it up there? That, that's kind of a good outlay for the, you know, where, where we're looking for the next, uh, you know, three or four months. Um, it seems a little bit subdued in my mind, but, you know, sometimes in the past when, when things have been subdued, that's kind of just before things begin to move a little bit. Because I, I do think that uh, the sector is in good shape going forward. And that's something that, 
you know, it's hard to say in the past, uh, you know, past couple of cycles where, you know, balance sheets are in good shape. We've talked about that many times. Um, yeah, M&A has been, as you said, measured and, uh, and, and responsible, if I could say that word. Um, but uh, yeah, so hey, once again, Carrie Mercury, thanks for joining me, Carrie. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more content like that, please consider subscribing or join me on my website, greggorner.com. That's greggorner.com. Look forward to seeing you there.